डॉक्टर मंडल सभी सभी हेड लोगों को बोलिए अपने अपने साइंटिस्ट को बोले चलो ज्वाइन करने के लिए मैं भी बोलती हूँ छुटिया बाबू को सभी को बोलने के लिए हम दस बारह लोग ज्वाइन किए हैं तीन बज गया है डॉक्टर डोगरा हैज जॉइन गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर डोगरा या गुड आफ्टरनून गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर डोगरा या गुड आफ्टरनून मैडम गुड आफ्टरनून डॉक्टर मंडल गुड आफ्टरनून ऑल अदर साइंटिस्ट गुड आफ्टरनून या वेरी गुड आफ्टरनून या वी विल वेट फॉर 5 मिनट्स सम ऑफ आवर साइंटिस्ट विल बी जॉइनिंग प्लीज प्लीज नो इशू ओके आईसीआर मेल रे बेजीतिले डॉक्टर रथ आईसीआर मेल रे सब वस्तु को पठांतु समस्त को हम को जेंते आछि अपन सेमती समस्त को पठांतु ताले सिना हेता न बहुत प्रकृति से जॉइन करथांतु आईसीआर मेल रे सब आवे को देथले से सब कर देथांतु एक रिप रे पकई थांते आईआईआरआर रे पकई थांते एम सब विविनाड पकेले टिके लोक सिना हेबे आमे खाली 10 जण सुनले हबो इतने बढ़िया टॉपिक टा इतने बढ़िया टॉपिक आज बहुत लोग को मैंने मुझे एक्सपेक्ट करते लिया आप लोग जब मैं पब्लिसिटी करूँ ना हाँ तो बोल रहे हो
Madam, shall we start now? Well, let us start. I think it is too late. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dr. Shumnath, please. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. A respected Director, Madam, National Rice Research Institute, Dr. Padmani Shwain. Today's guest speaker, Dr. Devi Prasad Dogra, all head of divisions, regional stations, uh, scientists, students, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of NRRA family, I welcome you all at today's special talk under the Ajadika Amrit Mahasab lecture series. So as you know, uh, the Ajadika Amrit Mahasab is an initiative of the government of India to celebrate and commemorate 75 years of progressive India, the glorious history of its people, its culture and achievements. The official journey of Ajadi Kamrit Mahasab was commenced on 12 March, 2021, which started a 75 week countdown to our 75th anniversary of independence. And it will be celebrated until 15th August, 2023. The Indian Council of Agricultural Research is celebrating this Mahasab by organizing various awareness campaigns and lectures by eminent personalities on diverse thematic areas for reaching out to maximum stakeholders. National Rice Research Institute is also organizing many lecture series. So today, this is our 11th special talk and we are delighted to have with us Dr. Devi Prasad Dobra, Assistant Professor and Group Leader in Human Machine Systems Research Group School of Electrical Sciences, IIT Bhubaneswar. Dr. Dogra has kindly agreed to deliver his talk on a very interesting area of research, that is artificial intelligence applications in agricultural research and development. Uh, without wasting any time, I am coming directly to the program. And I would like to request Dr. P.C. Rath, Head Crop Protection Division to welcome Dr. Dogra and also give a brief about the pro <coughs> The Kamrit Mahasab being organized at the NRI Qatar. Sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Samnath. Good afternoon, Dr. Dogra and the colleagues at the Indian Institute of Technology. I take this opportunity to extend a warm welcome to Dr. Devi Prasad Jogra, Assistant Professor, School of Electrical Science, Indian Institute of Technology, on the occasion of a special talk series to celebrate 75 50 years of India's independence. I welcome our director, Dr. Padmin Swain, to preside this virtual function. Hearty welcome to all the dignitaries of ICR headquarters and other ICR institutes, head of divisions, and scientists of ICR and RRI. And welcome to one and all to this virtual function. Madam, we are organizing this uh, lecture series for the last one year since uh, uh, August two, uh, 2021. And uh, today we are organizing the 11th lecture in this series of a special talk to celebrate this 75 year of independence that is Ajadiga Amrita Mahasya. The first talk was delivered by Dr. P. Chandrasekhar, Director General, Manage Hyderabad on agripreneurship related extension on 18th August 2021. The second lecture was delivered by Professor Robert Henry of the University of Queensland, Australia on topic genomics of wild and domesticated rice on 7th September 2021. The third lecture we have conducted on 7th December 2021 uh, delivered by Professor Yenung Yang of Pennsylvania State University, USA, on topic CRISPR Cas enabled crop precision breeding and disease diagnostics. The fourth lecture we have conducted on 28th January 2022 by Professor Detlap Weigel of Max uh, Planck Institute of Biology, uh, Germany. Uh, on topic, a mutation is a mutation is a mutation. The fifth lecture was delivered by Dr. Owen Singh, Vice Chancellor of Birsa Agricultural University uh, on, fifth, uh, on fifth in the series on topic, uh, intellectual property rights, uh, retrospective and perspectives 
on 15th February 2022. The 6th lecture was delivered by Dr. Caroli T. Bull, Department Head, Plant Pathology, and the Director of Penn State Microbiome Center, Pennsylvania State University, USA, on topic Translational Taxonomy from Microbe to Microbiomes on 8th March 2022. The 7th lecture we have organized on March 29, 2022, and it is delivered by uh, Professor Jothan DJ, DG Jones, um, FRS Group Leader, the Sensbury Laboratory UK, on topic uh, dissecting and deploying plant immunoreceptor receptor mechanisms for crop protection. The eighth lecture was delivered by Professor K, Dr. K. Yala Reddy, Dean Faculty of Agriculture, Engineering and Technology, Angaru, Andhra Pradesh, India, on 30th May 2022. The ninth lecture was delivered by Professor Nick Talbot, the Sensory Laboratory, on investigating the cell biology of plant in infection by the rice blast fungus. Magna Pratha on 9th June 2022. The 10th lecture was delivered by Professor J. E. Parker, Max Planck Institute for Plant Breeding Research, uh, Germany, on plant immunity signaling path from fundamental research towards application on 2nd July 2022. So, in this series, we are now today conducting the 11th lecture and Dr. D.P. Dogra has kindly accepted our invitation to deliver this 11th special talk on artificial intelligence application in agricultural research and development. This is a very bright topic and is very interesting for this agriculture scientist. And this lecture is on virtual mode. Let us listen to this and uh, uh, more through this uh, special talk by Dr. Dogra. Now I am handing over this podium to Somnath for uh, to continue this program. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, now I request Dr. Sudharma Mandal, uh, principal scientist, to present the CV of Dr. Dogra before the audience, please. Thank you, Dr. Somnath. It's my pleasure to introduce our special guest uh, today, Dr. Devi Prasad Dogra, to the August virtual gathering. Dr. Dobra is an assistant professor and group leader, Human Machine Systems Research Group, School of Electrical Sciences, Computer Science and Engineering, Indian Institute of Technology, Bhubaneswar. Coming to his educa education, Dr. Dobra has received his BTEC degree from Haldia Institute of Technology, Haldia in 2001, MTech degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur in 2003, and PhD degree from Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur in 2012, all in computer science and engineering discipline. His professional experience spans like this. He worked with Haldia Institute of Technology as a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering during 2003 and 2006. He worked with Electronics and Telecommunication Research Institute, South Korea in 2000. 6, 7, and Samsung Research Institute, Noida, as research group leader during 2011 to 2013. Since December 2013, Dr. Dobra is with IIT Bhubaneswar. His research interests include fields of uh, applications of artificial intelligence in intelligent visual surveillance, artificial intelligence in intelligence Transport and, uh, transportation systems, AI in agriculture technology, computer vision, machine learning, AI in healthcare solutions, and augmented reality. His publications are very impressive. Uh, he has already published more than 120 research papers in international and national journals and uh, conference proceedings. His uh, research has uh, brought him a lot of laurels to his um, credit. Dr. Dogra has already been granted to US patent and 
five uh, more patents have been filed for approval in the areas of computer vision, visual surveillance, and image processing and applications. Among the award, honors awards accolades, Dr. Dobra is EFIP scholarship holder during his graduation, MHRD scholarship holder during his PhD. He is member of the prestigious Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers. He was awarded best employee award at Samsung, Samsung Research Institute, NOIDA. He is editor of the prestigious journal, Springer Nature Computer Science Journal. Also, he is editor of the Journal of Multimedia Information Systems. Dr. Dobra has received grants, research grants, more than 25 million INR. He has traveled a lot. International travel grants like Microsoft Travel Grant, MHRD Project Travel Grant for presenting research papers in international conferences. And he has delivered more than 50 invited talks on visual surveillance applications of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Dr. Dobra has so far guided four PhD scholars, 10 MTech students, and more than 50 BTech students. He is currently guiding seven PhD scholars, five MTech students, and 12 BTech students. Besides all these achievements, Dr. Dobra has a very passionate uh, affections towards the community. Dr. Dobra is associated with the government of Odisha to study the effect of migrants, move, migrants movement on COVID-19 pandemic spread. His team's model has helped the government to plan for medical facilities during the first two waves of COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Dobra is closely associated in various committees of Odisha police and crime branch for IT infrastructure development. We are indeed delighted to have Dr. Dugra for speaking to us on a topic, artificial intelligence, that has virtually taken the whole world by storm. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Now it's the time for the special talk. Dr. Dugra, kindly start your talk. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Dr. Dr. Padmini Swain, good afternoon, Dr. Roth, good afternoon, Dr. Soma, good afternoon, Dr. Mandal, and good afternoon, all the scientists here, all uh, scholars who have joined this uh, uh, talk over virtual platform. I, first of all, I must say my, so I hope that my screen is now visible. I'm, yes, sir. Yeah, thank you. So I, I must uh, thank uh, uh, Dr. Mondral and um, Madam for uh, inviting me to this talk because when I saw the list of the speakers who actually spoke into the platform, I got a little bit nervous. All the people who were actually you know, delivered this on this platform, on this August platform, probably uh, with respect to them, I'm, 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 I'm very you know, I'm a small person, but I, I'm again thankful to the uh, NRRI Katak uh, and uh, ICAR for inviting me to this talk. So, um, thank you all. So, I shall start uh, this talk as, if, uh, as the title says that artificial intelligence, its applications in agricultural research and development. Now, probably uh, in the in the current century, uh, particularly in the last uh, you know 20 years or so because of the advancement of artificial intelligence, not only, uh, you know, we talk about uh, medications, we talk about sports and gaming, we talk about intelligent transportation systems, we talk about public safety, but one, uh, one, one of the applic application areas of artificial intelligence is agricultural research and development. Probably uh, it has contributed a lot during uh, various uh, kinds of technological progresses into this field, starting from the smart agriculture, monitoring, field monitoring, crop monitoring, then crop yield estimation to even drug discovery, all these things. Drug discovery has been uh, used for, uh, you know, it's being used, artificial intelligence is being used there for maybe 25 or 30 years or so, but why it has suddenly picked up, uh, we need to understand a bit about it. The reason is 
uh, because of the advancement of the semiconductor technology and probably uh, the, the networking technology uh, these days what we are actually going through because of the high speed networks and high, high speed computing platforms. We are now actually able to solve those problems which we were not able to solve 30 years back using computers. Okay. So uh, th this is the overview of my talk um, where I shall initially uh, you know, introduce that what is uh, artificial intelligence and what is machine intelligence. Even I know that may, all of you know it, even some of you might be knowing better than me. I'll just introduce this terminology and I'll also you know, discuss a bit of importance of that why AI and ML are important and how IoT and AI actually hand holding together. And finally, I'll show you that how AI and ML techniques are being used in various agricultural fields. Okay, and what, what are the features in agriculture, technology driven agriculture. Okay, now, now, what is AI and computer vision? I, I have linked these both these terminologies together. The reason is that because um, uh, this one, Mm, they are highly related and particularly I have been working with computer vision since last 20 years and, and then I found that computer vision and AI they, they go hand in hand and particularly when we talk about surveillance whether we do field surveillance or whether we do public place surveillance computer vision is an integral part. So AI and computer vision they help machines to analyze and see like humans. Like when we human, we, we see the outside world, our brain actually acts as the interpreter or the analysis is done inside the brain. And all the sensors, like we talk about these five sensors, like our eyes, our ears, our skin, and our nose, all these sensors, they actually senses the environment and, and this data is processed by our brain. And then we take decisions like, we react to the natural um, phenomenon. Okay. However, for the computers to act similarly, we need to develop sensors which are intelligent enough. But how to how can we make these the sensors intelligent? Obviously, we need artificial intelligence. It is primarily concerned with the theory for building artificial systems that obtain information from data and images. So the data can take many forms, like it can be textual data, it can be numbers, it can be images, videos, motion sensors, any other type of sensors. I have shown you know, two, three examples here, which are mainly in the form of images, but these sensors can, uh, you know, the data can be forming, uh, you know, it can be a genome sequence, it can be a textual uh, data, it can be mathematical uh, or numerical numbers also. So this uh, data is important. Now, when we talk about various components of an AI systems, let's try to understand. These are very, you know, high level components we are talking about. The first one is the environment or the scene we are talking about. I have shown on the right side, there are certain food items, but the scene can be anything. It can be an agricultural field. It can be a patient's uh, ICU chamber. It can be, you know, a railway station. It can be highways. It can be uh, large fields also. When we talk about sensors, these sensors can be the camera sensors, these can be light sensors, these sensors can be sound sensors, these sensors can be motion sensors. There are other kinds of sensors also, depending on the application, we actually integrate these sensors with the computing device so that the sensors capture the data and this data is transferred to the computer, which is basically implementing the artificial intelligence algorithm for decision making. Now, while while this decision is being taken inside the computer, this computer needs to understand the data. So to understand the data, we basically apply artificial intelligence. Now, how do we make a computer artificially intelligent? Obviously, the computer needs to learn. Okay. Now, how the computer learns? If we go back to our childhood, uh, you know, time we can remember that or probably with some some of us will be remembering or we are now what whatever we are observing with our next generation kids we see that we train them on each and every day by providing clues now those clues are extremely important for a human being to understand 
Now, similarly, if we want a computer to understand the environment, not only the value which are coming through the sensors are important, we also need to understand that how these data is modeled inside the artificial intelligence framework. So that's why the machine learning deals with all these modeling, this clustering, and then the decision making. So when we combine together, we get artificial intelligence. Now let's see that how a typical AI driven computer vision works. Now, if I ask anyone, any human being with intelligence, we assume that we all human beings, we are intelligent enough to answer certain questions. Now, when we ask uh, a human being that, what do you see about this? Somebody will say that this is a parking place. Somebody may say that this is uh, an image of a restaurant or outside the restaurant. Somebody may say that this is a garden. Somebody may say this is, this, this is uh, mm, something else. Okay. So we can ask thousands of such questions. And all these questions will be having different answers or it may have you know, similar answers. Okay. Now, so if you look into the set of questions that can be answered, it, it runs into thousands probably in some cases it, it can go beyond that. Now we want correct answers for each one of these questions. Okay. Even person to person, it may vary. One person gives one answer to a particular question, another person may give like what kind of scene? This is a question. This question can be answered by 10 people and you, you may get 10 different answers. All are different and all may be valid with respect to the perspective of the person who is giving the answer. Now, this is what is making the AI system difficult. How do you ensure that the AI system actually gives the answer which the user wants? Okay. So that's why it's, it's really difficult. Particularly, uh, if you talk about um, interactive systems, there it is much more uh, difficult. But I still feel artificial intelligence in agriculture is probably, um, now it is the time to apply artificial intelligence to the agriculture because AI has matured enough so that it can take decisions which are more or less uh, standardized decisions. Okay, Like, if I take an example, like there, there is a large rice field and if you would like to apply certain kind of uh, pesticides or certain kind, kind of nutrients. Now, depending on the quality of the growth of the uh, plants and uh, through expert advice, advice, you can understand that, okay, how, how much quantity of the pesticides need, need to be sprayed. So th th this is a fixed answer. Okay, assuming that the scientific community understands that um, uh, what kind of uh, material needs to be um, you know, sprayed and what will be the amount. And, and, and I believe these are all standardized. So if this is standardized, then probably then AI system can take a decision. But the questions like this, in this picture, they are much more difficult to answer. So I believe since I have been working with these visual surveillance systems, which has matured enough since last 20 years, it is the right time to go into the, its application into artificial intelligence. Like these are the questions, where are the cars? How far is the building? These are all questions which can be answered by humans and the answers can also vary depending on the person to person. Now, why it is difficult? If you see, with this example, we can try to understand. On the left side, I'm just showing an image, what we see on the left side. On the right side, what a computer sees. Now, if we need a correlation from the left side to the right side, let's say that this uh, rail engine, which is, which is basically falling down, Okay, which part of the numbers representing that? So that is what we are going to do in artificial intelligence, particularly when we are talking about visual surveillance. Okay. Now, what are the applications? All these applications you might have seen. Left side is a question that if, if I show this image of uh, Bill Gates, somebody will uh, say that, okay, this is a face image. Now, the question can be, is it a teacup? Is it a face or is it a phone? An intelligent person or a person who knows that what is face will definitely answer that this is a face. It's a simplistic question. Okay. But the question can be further difficult. If I ask that whether the person is wearing a speck or not, whether the person is smiling or crying. So these are all even qu deeper questions that the AI can answer these days. So AI has advanced a lot. On the right side, if you see, this is a face detection. 
these days this is very common in our mobile phones earlier it was also available in in the digital cameras okay that face detection is these days is very common even smile shutters like when when a person smiles automatically the photo is captured now this is what has you know the ai has done now if if it is applicable to digital uh, you know electronics or consumer electronics why it cannot be applied to agriculture that is what we are going to look now here is an entire development chart that how basically ai and machine learning has evolved and how it is currently standing in industry 4.0 okay so if you look at the backgrounds of the in industrial development and the great changes in uh, related categories say you, you must have uh, you know followed and you, you people are even uh, knowing better than me because all these industrial uh, you know revolutions during industry 1.0 industry 2.0 3.0 they were primarily starting with mechanization steam and water power gradually moved to mass production of electricity then it moved to electronic and it systems now we are in the age of artificial intelligence so it is assumed that from 2015 to 2020 2050 during this 35 to 40 years time ai is going to take over all sorts of difficulties that human kind actually faced during the previous 2 3 centuries which were unsolved due to uh, several reasons now artificial intelligence is definitely going to dominate this in industry 4.0 and that is the reason we have to now uh, look into it what are the solutions that are going to come uh, into the agriculture domain now i actually chose a uh, hand pick this particular uh, you know slide because this tells you that if we can build a robot like this is a sophia robot which is uh, which is a first ai humanoid robot which was developed in hong kong based on a you know hong kong based company okay it was brought to kolkata and there was a live interaction with this robot okay so that robot was able to interact with a typical human being and the robot was able to answer the questions that were being asked by the host now that tells that we are probably you know moving toward a time where all the machines can interact with human being seamlessly smoothly and we won't be able to understand that whether the answer is given by a human being or a machine so that was the question which was asked by alan turing who is considered as the pioneer of the modern computing that the day we humans we won't be able to distinguish the answer which is coming from an unknown entity whether that entity is a human being or a computer then we know that the computer is intelligent and that is what basically we are reaching if you listen to the answers given by this uh, robot these answers were so accurate that the person without knowing that whether the answers are given by a human robot or a human being or a robot person won't be able to understand or distinguish rather so that is the Uh, that that is the turning point so probably we are we are reaching toward the real intelligent system which uh, alan turing has defined okay and we are reaching toward that now why to choose the field of agriculture particularly you know now i will i will, I will basically focus on india in india context because we after the 75 years of independence probably this is the right time to focus that how ai and machine learning can be applied to agriculture particularly india is a country with uh, 1.4 billion population we simply cannot ignore agriculture uh, simply because the industries are coming no it can't be done because uh, agriculture actually provides the growth of the socio economic um, sector of india the means of living for almost 66% of the employed class in india and it acquired 18% of india's gdp even though this data may be a little bit you know older but you can understand that how basically um, it, it it is changing okay it occupied almost 43% of india's uh, geographical area which is a huge uh, portion even though these days this area is uh, shrinking due to the expansion nature of the uh, industrial development but uh, that is another reason that why we basically invent with ai because ai can actually solve this problem with with the 
uh, smaller area, we can probably uh, produce the same uh, quality of the or same amount of the food as well as by maintaining the quality of the food. So also of late, huge investment made for the irrigation facilities. Okay, if we have already made uh, the huge investment in the irrigation facilities, then why not to use uh, that facility and basically boost the agro industries? Okay, so. Uh, from the uh, from the regulatory side there were several um, uh, moderations okay happened through 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 the decades and this has made you know agricultural products are being competitive these days okay so there were uh, you know certain uh, blockages which have been removed so unnecessary restrictions like movement stocking and other things which were um, earlier there now now it is free flowing okay also through Government and government, private, public, uh, public, private, in you know, entrepreneurships. The farmers have started getting good price, okay, and a substantial technology growth in coming years. It is definitely going to um, bring the air, okay. Now, there are certain areas which were which have already been identified uh, for enhancing the agriculture sector, starting from. Uh, crop conditions, weather and climate, and ecosystems. Okay. Now, in all these things, basically AI can um, contribute a lot. Starting from the crop condition monitoring, I, I will show you some examples that how basically AI can be helpful in monitoring the crop health and maintaining the the nutrition levels uh, through AI-based systems. Okay. Similarly, weather and climate, because uh, Indian farmers, if we are able to tell them accurately that at what point of time, what kind of temperature, humidity, uh, you know, uh, other, other environmental parameters are going to vary, then probably uh, the, the yield will be uh, much better. Okay. So this is what um, the AI, uh, the driving force behind the AI. So on the basis of AI interest, computation intelligence in agriculture and, and the environment, okay, so there are uh, different uh, companies who are coming up with, with various solutions. Government organizations have started creating, creating environments. Like I, I know that in Ararai Katak has their incubation center. Similarly, IIT Bhubaneswar also we have incubation centers. Currently, I'm, I'm heading that incubation center here itself. So we also encourage the, the entrepreneurs who would like to invest in agricultural technology. Okay. Now, if you look into the projected employment in agriculture sector, even though the employment has uh, been predicted to be a little bit down, but I still feel that this is not a big concern. The point is this, um, you know, there is a slight downfall from 2013 to 2022. The reason is probably the other sectors which have been growing very fast. Okay. So the handholding in the agriculture sector is getting smaller with the growth in family members and poor availability of labor. So it means these days people are not actually going for agricultural labors. Now we need to find a solution because without food we cannot um, survive. So the yield is heavily dependent on the labor as well as it is dependent on the monsoon. So if, you, if we basically come up with good prediction models, which are only possible if AI is there. Okay. So if you look into the percentage of employment in the Indian agriculture sector, which has constantly reduced from 52% in 2010 to 42% in 2018. Okay. So essentially, the total requirement of the manpower for the agriculture sector in 2020 is estimated to be um, 215.6 million. And of this, the second figure is more important. 173.3 million are expected to be skilled. When we are talking about skilled, I'm obviously not asking them to be an engineer or engineering skilled, but there will be certain skills which we can actually develop with this manpower. And uh, some of the entrepreneurs and some of the researchers we have already, you know, the, the field, the, the, the community have started working on it, that how to skill. I'll show you some of these examples. Okay. So in terms of employment estimation through implementation of IoT 
and AI for agricultural sector, there is a pipeline. Okay, starting from a long list of uh, applications, IoT uh, and AI applications, which will create long-term sustainable jobs. Okay, then uh, it involves activities involved in, impl in implementing each applications where identified. Okay, and uh, gradually we go to relevant employment estimation. Okay, and and annual salary type decided. Then uh, maximum and realistic employment is done. Okay, so finally, when we come to the um, you know final recommendations, we basically ensure that employment potential has further been you know split into the nature of jobs and the type of jobs. So if the nature of job and type of job uh, has changed, so that means we need to train this manpower properly. Okay, now how? different sectors I'm, I'm talking about sub sectors within the agriculture how they they can benefit so researchers have already identified certain applications for indian agricultural sector okay satellite mapping one thing so if we do satellite mapping properly then obviously the usage of this land can be optimized so satellite mapping can provide scientific data to the agricultural researchers and then they can come up with certain kind of uh, you know recommendations that this particular field is maybe suitable for this kind of crop okay so this is what ai can do it now the point is satellite mapping manual mapping is very extremely difficult that's why we are bringing artificial intelligence to map the entire agriculture field similarly if you look into e markets the farmers are basically generating products now the question is that whether they are really connected to the buyers or not. If they are not connected, then probably farmers are at the loss. So if the e-markets are developed, particularly from the government side, then it is definitely going to help the farmers. The third one is the livestock um, traceability. This is one point in a country like India where we need to do it. Now because of the low-cost sensors, like for example, we, you know, in, in old in our days, I, I am also from agriculture family background, so I know that how we used to basically track our cattle using those you know sound making uh, devices which we usually you know put into the um, neck of the cows and when they will come back we know that this is our cows are coming now these days they are smart they are getting smarter i mean to say that you can track the exact locations can be found their body temperature their other things can also be tracked it's not only their tracking we also can monitor their physical conditions okay so monitoring the physical conditions of the cattle is extremely important because we can actually you know nurture them properly the productivity will certainly increase okay so if you talk about the milk production i believe that there are certain companies who have started developing this ai and iot based sensors to monitor the health of these uh, wines so that they can produce the optimum milk okay then the climate sensing stations even though the um, IMD has already distributed, you know, lots of sensors across the Bay of Bengal, but I think this particular, you know, field sensors are still lacking in India. So if the field sensors, which can sense moisture and other parameters related to agriculture in large agriculture field, that is definitely going to help, help the farmers to take decisions based on, on conditions. Okay. Then product traceability. Product traceability is particularly during the transportation systems. Large farmers, the corporate, uh, the cooperative farming case, where they, where basically they would like to do business with larger companies. Okay, so they need to tra trace and track their product while they are being um, transported. So that is what another uh, another point where AI comes. Then agricultural drone. I'll show you that how agricultural drone can be helpful, you know. Uh, with the um, with the help of image processing and computer vision, how basically we can optimize the uh, power requirement as well as we can we can we can mitigate a lot of problems uh, that the farmers actually face while while spraying uh, the pesticides and all health hazard um, elements uh, during the cultivation. Okay, and uh, smart farming, which is already being done in many countries. With the help of sensors and sensor guided uh, you know, technology we, we should bring these things into our country now moving uh, ahead into various applications ai has already been uh, being up applied in genomic study okay where basically you know um, 
prediction, then uh, they do prediction, they do integration, they do genetic reconstruction, then clinical practices, bioinformatics, genomic streaming, all these kinds of research are being done. All, are, all these fields, basically, they take the genome data. Now, if you see genome data, they are simple sequence. Okay. Now, identifying particular pattern within the sequence, manually, it's an extremely tough job. Okay. This is what the AI comes here itself. Here, the data comes in the form of text. So if you are looking for a particular type of pattern in that, in that text, in a large text, these genome sequences are large, large and extreme, extremely large. So it's very difficult. I'll show you that how it is uh, difficult, particularly in drug discovery. So why it is so difficult to make drugs? If you ask the estimates of the number of possible drug molecules averages 10 to the power 40. In contrast, the number of seconds since the Big Bang happened is 10 to the, uh, 10 to the 17. It means if 10,000 chemists were to prepare one compound each per second, it would take this many years to finish the job, which is a huge, you know. So the database is so huge. We can't do it by, you know, manual uh, interventions. We need to bring uh, artificial intelligence. That's why drug discovery is if you would like to eradicate drugs, not only uh, you know, eradicate uh, you know, disease, would like to come up with new drugs, not only for human beings, obviously for plants also. So that is the reason, this is where artificial intelligence comes heavily, okay. Like this example, take this example. The study of the cellular effects of procyanine was instrumental in the discovery of the cytoskeletal protein tubulin. So this, uh, in a sequence starting from the image to its chemical compound to its uh, intermolecular compound to its genomic sequence if it would have been done manually without the help of computers it would have taken probably hundreds of years to complete this one okay so this is where the ai actually comes okay so you talk about this image like this one if you talk about this image this image, if thousands of such images are given to the scientists to identify these uh, um, units, it will take time. And obviously, we humans are, uh, you know, susceptible to various kinds of environmental effects. So we we may do errors or we we we, miss, we do mistakes. Here, basically, computer comes and AI comes, so we can identify these items automatically, and then uh, the rest process can be done. Now, all these things actually require different kinds of information, starting from model specific threshold. We also need to know the disease data, the growth stage data, different kinds of vari you know, database for varieties, weather data, and then pesticides data. When all these things actually come together, then we learn this more. Through AI, we build these models. These models are basically the AI models, when we talk about, then how we humans, we take decision because our neural network, through our neural network, through our brain. Now, basically what we, what the AI has done it, they have created artificial neural networks, which can take decisions as like human beings, we are taking decisions, okay. So this is one. Now let's see some of the use cases. So phenotyping, if you look into this, this, is a, this these are some of the examples which I have taken from various uh, research groups. If you see uh, this particular platform, if you would like uh, monitoring of such phenotyping activities, you need intelligent monitoring, starting from the sensing the temperature, sensing the moisture, sensing the uh, you know humidity and all other uh, parameters, and then probably you 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 um, the sensors the sensors the environment and then the actuators can actually work accordingly so that the environment can be maintained. Okay, similarly. But take this example, this is identification. This is identification by visual observation can be quite difficult sometimes, like grading this disease. Okay. Now, these are, these can be done using image processing based uh, techniques, which are uh, very common these days, because you take the snapshot, then identify that how much area of this particular leaf or how much area of this particular stain is being infected by certain kind of pathogen, like this is, one uh, in a barley leaves with um, powdery mildew. Okay, so 
these two leaves, uh, they, they, they have been affected by different uh, kind. Okay. Now, identification of these things obviously can be done by experts by visual observation. But if their uh, images are available, then you do not need an expert. An AI system can actually de you know, detect the grade and type of the um, type of the infection. Okay. Now, another one these days, this is uh, quite uh, common that uh, AI is also used in hydrophonic systems. Like, in, we, you all are expert in, uh, in the hydroponic systems. I'm not an expert, but what I can tell you that this requires a lot of sensors to be placed. And these sensors, if you look into this, in the right side, this is the sensor, which basically, it, here it is shown as a camera, but it can be any sensors. So which senses, and then the control system actually takes a decision based on the value. And then it gives the direction to the control device that, okay, there is something wrong. This will probably with, with the plant, uh, you know, apply certain kind of uh, you know, remedies to that. So this control device actually helps or control device is controlled by the control system. That is um, the, the influence of the AI share. Okay. So you do not need manual monitoring of the field, okay? It can automatically take a decision that when to uh, put nutrient, when to basically dry it, or when to apply what kind of solutions. Now, drone-based is another one. This is, I will show you more examples with drone-based because particularly we have started uh, in Aradai Katak and IIT Bhubaneswar have started doing collaborating research, uh, particularly for rice fields where drones are going to, you know, uh, solve a lot of problems for the rice field um, farmers. I'll show you with how, how it can be useful. This is an example. It can actually identify the health of the crop, the, the, uh, the pest infection, and also certain types of uh, you know, weeds it can identify, and it can actually deploy or help deploying the material I'm talking about material means either it, it can be it, it pesticides or it can be nutrients in a targeted way. So that essentially reduces the wastage and also it reduces the chance of getting those hazardous material uh, being sprayed around our body. Okay. Now, this is what another AI model can do. Like this is a sooty mold on leaves. So the amount and quantity can be useful for the farmer to spray the uh, certain pesticides. Okay, so how do you how, how do you quantify? It? So th these sort of things you may not be uh, as a farmer. I may not be inter interacting with the agriculture scientist on daily basis. Okay, so there comes the AI systems. Okay, like this one. Uh, how do we identify our or, or say, say for example, particularly this will be helpful for a uh, grape uh, farming where uh, they would like to basically do the trimming and what time of trimming, what kind of uh, bushes are there, all these things can be done easily done by, you know, image processing based uh, and depth analysis based things, which are, which are these days quite matured and it is possible. Like, and also this is, this is machinery part, but in this machinery also artificial intelligence, like high end machines. These machines are not like a mechanical machines. Okay. They are, electromechanical machines which are taking decisions like when to pluck, when not to pluck, based on the color, probably based on the smell, and probably based on some other factors depending on um, the crop. Okay, so all these machines are artificially intelligent machines. Okay, and we need to bring it into our um, farming technology also. Now, now I will shift the focus that why the field surveillance is extremely important. And particularly AI guided field surveillance, because food security still remains threatened. And it's due to several reasons like disease space, climate change, natural calamities, and many other factors. And uh, crop pathogens and pests reduce the yield. And you all know better than me that the, the, uh, how the statistics are there. Now, as per the, uh, the study, to satisfy the growing demand of food, the global agriculture production must increase by 70% by 2050. So and another good thing is that since we are going for industry 4.0, which is basically spanning from 2015 to 2050, and where the AI is coming, so probably there is a very nice match. And this 
uh, food production, agricultural food production increase, which is which is going to be seventy percent, it can be met with the help of artificial intelligence. I'll show you one example that what we are uh, going to uh, you know deploy it for the rice farmers. Basically, a drone-based surveillance systems with integrated camera and spraying mechanisms, which can identify the field, which can automatically reach to the portion of the field. Exact portion of the field and amount of spraying needed. That's where the technology comes. It is how the now how the technology comes. The drone anyone can buy drone and anyone can fly. That's not going to work. The point here is that the sensors which are you know fitted with the drone, those sensors capture data and at the back end there is an artificial intelligence algorithm which is running. And that algorithm actually drives the drone automatically to reach to a particular location. Deploy the material, come back. Okay. Now, uh, so so for example, if if I if I uh, play these videos, you'll see that okay, these videos are not playing. Let me see. Yeah. So like on the left side, this is a this is a real image. On the right side, this is image segmentation. These are all captured through drones. Okay. Now. These are intermediate results I'm talking about. Like here, you see the rice field of different colors, but on the right side, through image segmentation me mechanisms, we can identify that which are the fields and uh, particularly how the color variation is happening. Okay. Similarly, uh, here also you see that when the on, the on the left side you see that there is a real field. On the right side, uh, it's basically image segmentation, and based on the seg segmentation, you can take a decision. So these are just intermediate sample outputs which i am showing essentially with the help of image processing you can identify these patches and then take decision that whether whether the pesticide needs to be uh, you know sprayed here or it is not required okay now why targeted uh, delivery of pesticides and nutrients are important it avoids hazardous manual delivery of pesticides these days farmers still carry all these things through backpacks and that is definitely going to help uh, i mean to the harm their um, health okay so we need lesser body contact with this hazardous liquid okay and also uh, another point is snake bites particularly these uh, rice for, uh, rice feeds the farmers go to the field there are lots of such cases happening around odisha west bengal bihar where the rice field is uh, much more uh, common these days and you find that uh, farmers are facing this difficulty, which can easily be avoided. And with the help of image analysis, which is part of the AI techniques, can actually optimize the use of material also. So that is another important point. It's not only that hazard, uh, hazardous thing can be avoided or the snake bites can be avoided. Also, the optimized use of materials can also be done, okay, or minimizing the loss of materials to reduce the wastage. Okay, so a typical AI based solution there can look like automatically the drone flies there and then the uh, AI algorithm does the you know processing, then it identifies a path which is optimal, and then in the next round it goes there and basically sprays the exact amount required at that place. Another part this will be helpful for the government yield estimation. I know that there are techniques for uh, these days, they use satellite images, even the manual surveillance is there. Say, Odisha is very prone to cyclonic storms. Now, when after the cyclonic storm, the government actually goes for uh, compensation, how do they do it? Obviously, based on certain feedback they are receiving from the field. Now, those feedbacks either come from the satellite images or come through the local inputs. Now, this is where basically AI based systems can be helpful. With the help of drone based systems, we can exactly identify that how much amount of damage has happened. So this yield estimation with, with a similar kind of uh, in a model, we can, we can do it. Okay. Another point is called pathogen interaction. Pathogen interaction is basically, uh, we need to know that what kind, I have already shown you some sort of examples that leaves are being infected of, by certain kind of pathogens. Now, unless we identify the right kind of uh, crop pathogen interaction, then applying the remedy may not be good. Okay. Now, these days, because of the emergence of the smartphone, and everyone is now using this one, why not to basically come up with AI-based systems 
but the, the farmers can use it and they can take they, they can take the advice of the software and i know that there are several um, you know organizations they have already come up with certain solutions but still there are ample scopes particularly in india because there are different types of crops okay the the algorithm which are working for potato may not be working for uh, in rice okay the algorithm which is working for uh, maize it may not be working for uh, any other crop so we need to basically come up with crop specific algorithms also which is only possible when we invest uh, our time by applying artificial intelligence techniques into these domains now let's see that how people have already started these are some of the uh, use cases which have already been started but at individual levels like in kerala who we were when i was talking with dr mandul you know we have started researching all these things in couple of uh, last uh, last two years or so we found that people have started applying it okay like uh, but these are all uh, all at individual levels this has not yet come as a technology okay and i feel that ai is going to change this in next uh, down the line next five years okay people have started using it in other countries okay like uh, you know spraying these materials spectral analysis of the fields through ai based techniques but in india no we are still lagging and we this is the right time basically to adopt uh, such technology in india india scenario like drone for spraying uh, materials and um, uh, you know other, other pesticides they are heavily used in other countries why not to be done here and they can actually reduce a lot of cost and they can also improve the uh, quality of the products okay AI for plant pathology. It's a large domain where image processing, based plant pathology, is these days very much common. Okay, there are research works published each and every year. If you look into the uh, you know um, those uh, conference and journal proceedings, you will find that a lot of papers these days are being published on how to identify different kinds of uh, crop pathogen interactions with by analyzing the images by analyzing the textures of the um, of the leaves okay and even through doing satellite imaging okay now let me tell you why we have actually taken <coughs> at iit bhubaneswar we have certain ai expertise we have started developing drones our own drones obviously these drones need to be uh, fine tuned with respect to the agricultural need okay and then the sensors need to be fit okay on the right side since i have been working with ai Uh, since last 15 20 years i have started deploying these techniques for intelligent transportation systems like car and vehicle monitoring uh, large gathering monitoring like some of our projects we, which we have run for you know puri ratha yatra we we wanted to estimate the crowd that actually were flowing on the day of ratha yatra so that we can, we could probably help government to take certain administrative decisions because uh before it 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 goes to a uh, you know wrong events like stampede kind of thing so this is what iit bhubaneswar is working on uh, various kinds of um, computer vision ai related uh, techniques so that this can be applied to not only to intelligent transportation systems or surveillance we are also now focusing on applications of all these ai techniques into agriculture too so uh with that i would like to uh, finish today's talk thank you i am now ready to have a discussions with the uh, esteemed panel members here thank you sir thank you madam thank you sir for your very nice and elaborate presentation so you have introduced us to different components of ai like scene sensor computer system for decision making and also so does the application of ai in crop management uh, like crop condition monitoring disease monitoring using drones also prediction of weather and uh, recommendation uh, mapping of agricultural lands for proper land uses and like phenomics phenomics ai is coming up in a big way also handling of big genomic data in bioinformatics pipeline so thank you and i request the audience to raise your hand or text your uh, question in the chat box chat box yeah we have around uh, 10 minutes for discussion sir so sir uh, i, I hope take many of i hope uh, many of our staff are working on uh, yes, uh, yes ai and machine learning so 
they must be having some queries. Please raise your hand, otherwise you can write in the chat box. Uh, Dr. Mahapatra, you have raised your hand, so please uh, unmute yourself and interact. Okay, very, very good afternoon. Uh, here, Dr. Mahapatra. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Devi, for your nice deliberation. So, I have some uh, queries regarding this, uh, particularly the artificial intelligence, IoT, machine learning, and so also the remote sensing. So you might be knowing that uh, in the artificial intelligence, particularly in the field of uh, diagnosis and management in the area of agriculture, so Plantix is one of the giant worker. So still, we are, uh, uh, they, though they are in uh, penetrated in India and in Hyderabad in, in many areas in India. So they, their project is also going on uh, in different languages also. But so far, the identification of pest and disease concern, <coughs> the accuracy level, they are not reached up to the mark. So what is the drawbacks, particularly why they have not reached one? Another is, the here earlier we are using the ANN artificial neural network and now for particularly the image processing the CNN that convolutional neural network we are going so that is one of the uh, accurate methods compared to the ANN so uh, so give a light on this so that the other audience will, will also be enlightened yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mahabatru. So I believe uh, the first, uh, the, the reason for the, uh, the failure related to the first question is that probably the data unavailability. Okay. Any AI system, if they would like to, like you were talking about plant uh, pathogen. Okay. So I'll, there may be different types of crops. Okay. Now for the, uh, you know, infection into the crop, you need a lot of data before the AI system can take correct decisions. I'll tell you, when uh, when the object recognition based AI systems initially came, since your second question is related to CNN, which are uh, which are the building blocks for object recognition, they needed millions of images before they can actually reach to a certain level of accuracy. Okay. Like I'll give you another practical example. I work in intelligent transportation systems. I detect vehicles on road. Okay. Now all the vehicles on road, which were uh, which were done on international um, roads, like in other, outside India. So the models were trained on the vehicles which were not available in India. Now when you use the same model in India, like I am doing it for Bhubaneswar, uh, auto is not there. So my system is failing. So I have started now training with thousands, thousands of auto images so that the AI system can learn. So I believe the reason can be, one of the reasons can be the shortage of data. Okay, it requires a lot of data. And gradually the accuracy will improve. And if it varies from crop to crop, then obviously you require more data. This is one point. Uh, related to the second one, you talked about artificial neural network and convolution and neural network. Artificial neural networks are basically simplistic model. Okay. Now in convolution and neural network, we extend it to two dimensions because images are two dimensional in nature. Okay. We also apply their um, the filters like uh, which are used in, in uh, typical image processing. But because these days data we receive in the form of image, which is the form of matrix. Okay. So if we receive the data in the form of matrix, we need the mathematical operators to be also in that same tune. So that's why convolutional neural network came, which is which, which can handle two dimensional as well as three dimensional data. Like motion, when, when, when something is moving, it's not two dimensional. It's moving in spatial as well as moving in temporal. So we require three dimensional data. So that's why convolutional neural network, CNNs and CNNs are actually 
basic mathematical things remain uh, still remain the same yes uh, here exactly uh, i want to know that automation nowadays particularly in our context in nrri since uh, director madam is also there and we are going for uh, automation of the uh, farm so uh, here the major problem or major setback for us is the agriculture operation and agriculture labors right so can you uh, um, give guide us in this direction because i know because uh, there are a lot of uh, um, hurdles and constraints in image recognition in particular to pest and diseases right. you are working on the human or uh, trafficking that is different and here particularly insect uh, insect disease diagnosis and recognition is somewhat uh, very very tough task and what you told the data data set and creating database and data set is also a herculean task right. but if even in a in a disease or in a particular insect pest if you are working and if you don't have a, at least 1000 data set in particular event then it is not easy right. to go for the identification right. so that is one of the uh, major hurdles for us to implement this ai but right. we are in the process we are we are getting we are gathering the data and getting in done right but in our case uh, particularly in our nrri case we are doing a lot of things lot of research but the whatever we whenever we are reaching the problem that is the agriculture operations so the time management agriculture operation means it is it is operated through the uh, uh yeah, our farm, uh, farmers because uh, we we depend on the agricultural uh, laborers hmm. so, so this what, type of automation you need to come up with now uh, you know uh, you know machine based uh, you know replacement like drones yes like drones yes. intelligent drones which are part of integral part of ai system so you have to come up with those kind of solutions yes that that is what so uh, i will i will uh, request uh, uh, through our director that if you can have a plan just uh, the like iit uh, uh, yeah that uh, khadakpur they they had a, a integrated plan for bhubneswar uh, atak for uh, planning the uh, planning and layout so in a small scale our farm if can you can have a plan and uh, give it to us so that we can implement in the uh, right from the beginning of the um, this uh, agriculture operation nursery raising till harvest so uh, in that way we can uh, save a lot of revenue right this. right so that sir. type of things right it, actually you can uh, line, plan in the same line me and one of your colleagues dr uh, sunhome mondal we have already started jointly working on it and we have proposed a project to government of odisha which has been uh, approved uh, at the you know the secretary level now we are now we are in the process of the approval just to uh, you know ensure that because we understood that this labor shortage will be there and there will be inaccuracies while the deployment so that's why we we planned it a couple of years back let's you know come up with some uh, technological solutions and iit and nrri kadak is now uh, you know jointly proposing this so that we will come up with a solution maybe down the line next two years time the technology will be developed by iit and it will be tested with the help of scientists of the nrri kadak so that it can reach to the farmers through cooperative level or through government level whatever way possible we will develop the technology and it will be uh, you know validated at nrri kadak and it will reach to the uh, government and then then its governments job is definitely to make it as as a product which reaches to the uh, customer that is what we are planning uh, uh, dr dogra just i'll interrupt uh, i think uh, uh, i had some uh, yeah site uh, insight to that uh, project that is uh, basically in the area of this uh, disease and uh, disease may identification and this uh, uh, spread uh, um, ai ai guided spraying 
but right. i am i am talking about the holistic holistic approach of the farm automation our no, holistic, farm automation holistic approach of the yeah. farm automation the farm sector is too huge if you talk about uh, you know uh, yeah. rice farming if you talk about potato farming if you talk about mango no, farming no 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 it is a customized our nrri i am talking our nrri farm okay okay dr dasma batra I, i thank you very much for your concern for our <laughs> labor problem particularly nowadays we are facing so that is a very good question of course but uh, it needs uh, again a lot of discussion and uh, when we are having some uh, initiated some collaboration with uh, dr dogra and uh, they are developing some project in the uh, developmental stage only i think we will take a special day for uh, that to have some more discussion we can invite dr dogra to our yes, institute yes. i will definitely and, uh, put a mind yeah. bro because we are uh, now can give with... a deliberation there itself we can have lot of discussion i think right. otherwise right. It, it will hinder a lot of people to again interact and right. uh, it is a very good of course dr dasma raised what we in a holistic approach if you can reduce the labor shortage it will right. really be a great achievement but, uh, <laughs> but some that is more need... administrative that is more administrative than technological than so. technology yeah <laughs> so uh, definitely we will invite you to our institute sure. one day and sure. uh, you you proceed further we will definitely get a time with you and we will definitely mm -hmm. invite you so that mm -hmm. other scientist also can interact with you can learn sure. from you they have sure. learned today a lot okay thank you we can dr somnath we can go for some other question if there yes yes dr das also had some question dr sushant das okay okay dr das yeah uh, thank you dr dogra for a uh, insightful talk and discussion uh, i have uh, some queries regarding the yield estimation yes. particularly uh, yield estimation whether you have uh, uh, any idea or the precise method of yield estimation using the thermo uh, thermal image uh, camera uh, thermal image i have used it for a different uh, domain i have not used it yield estimation in rice fields okay but i still believe that since we have done it in other domain the maybe we need to we need to tweak the algorithm maybe initial features need to be changed but yield estimation is possible and definitely that is what we are going to do it not using thermal images we are going to use it uh, normal visible light camera images using drones but thermal image based yield estimation particularly which is coming uh, say satellite images uh, it is possible i have not worked exactly into the thermal images uh, for yield estimation but i feel it is possible because the images are the basic source of information okay so yeah. by seeing the how the color is varying in a particular location it is possible to estimate okay i think it is possible okay uh, dr dogra whether you have any idea that in india somebody has worked upon it and uh, uh, published uh, uh, anything uh i do not have that information right now but i will definitely look into it and i'll i'll get back okay. to you okay thank you thank you so much okay no question acha just in the chat box oh madam <laughs> okay so uh, dr sir ha ha yeah. any anybody else is there i no, think no madam uh, no question in the chat box i think uh, if Kishan any was... if you are any time going to close so before hmm. that uh, i came to know that dr maithi has also joined our previous director just before me he, yes, he yes. has also joined uh, we can ask the sir some to give or, his uh, remarks in, okay sir please if sir is there sir thank you very much and, thank you very much sir thank you good afternoon to everybody so very nice to see everybody Uh, my old colleagues in this platform and uh, yes, i often uh, use this platform to interact with you to see to you so thank you very much and i also know that the program personally because you can uh, remember we yes, yes. had a initial discussion regarding yes. one of the project prep preparations on artificial intelligence so that's still in the way i mean we can go ahead with and uh, i know dr mandal is also collaborating with you uh, in terms of uh, this project in terms of pro uh, disease diagnostics so that's good nice and uh, also dr mahapatra raised a good question good uh, question so that we can have a 
uh, a separate discussion as madam also insisted so that we can go ahead with those type of uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence use in our farm mechanization thank you sir so thank, thank you very much and uh, thank you very much madam thank you very much sir we, we are really very fortunate to have thank you, you. many you, times i have seen you but uh, today also we wanted to listen from you sir sir thank you very much to thank you very much. sir thank uh, you. kindly we how long this one is there and this uh, online meeting is there and uh, you are having some time kindly join <laughs> yes yes please i am joining thank you. Yes. yeah thank you very much thank you very okay, much. dr Dr. Yes, sir, madam. So I am going ahead with the program. So it is now uh, time for the presidential address by you, madam. <laughs> so please. Uh... What type of presidential address uh, it is? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I am too too small to say anything. But anyway, really great, great congratulations, Dr. Dogra. Having very excellent uh, talk on this artificial intelligence, of course, many of my of our colleagues and those who have joined, they know much, much better than me and even at par with you. But still then I have to say a few lines. So it is really an excellent talk and I profusely thank you for this wonderful talk uh, on artificial intelligence applications in agriculture research and development. That is really a burning topic nowadays and uh, we want to utilize this uh, AI in uh, agriculture sector also. <clears throat> As everybody knows, uh, uh, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization, the world population will definitely going to reach uh, beyond 9 billion by 2050 and uh, rapid people, population growth, shrinking farmland, Dwindling natural resources, erratic climate change, and shifting market demand, etc., are pushing the agriculture production system into the new paradigm. And the new agriculture system must become more productive in output, efficient in operation, resilient to climate change, and sustainable for future generation. This artificial intelligence, this hold a promise in addressing the challenges in this new paradigm. For example, plant diseases, we have heard a lot from Dr. Dogra. They are the major threat to the environment, economy, and food security. Early detection of crop disease is essential for effective disease management. AI-based image recognition system would recognize specific plant diseases with a high degree of accuracy, potentially paving the way for field-based crop disease identification using mobile devices such as smartphones. Advances in AI, computer vision, uh, mechatronics and machine learning. They are enabling the development and deployment of remote sensing technologies to identify and manage plants, weeds, pests, and diseases. This also provides a unique opportunity to develop intelligence uh, seeding methods for precise fertilization. AI solutions can enable farmers not only to reduce wastage, but also improve quality and ensure faster market access for their produce. Cognitive computer, computing has become the most disruptive technology in agriculture services as it can learn, understand, and interact with different environments to maximize productivity. Proximity sensing, remote sensing, Internet of Things, and image-based precision farming are being used for intelligent data integration related to historical metrology, soil reports, recent research, rainfall, disease, and pest intensification, and along with drone imagery is being used for in-depth analysis, crop monitoring and field surveys, rapid advancement in computational hardware <coughs> has opened up various possibilities to tackle difficult problems with the help of AI and machine learning. You, during the last decade or so, AI and machine learning guided about, uh, automated systems that have started replacing human dependent systems in services, including surveillance, industrial processes, agriculture, healthcare, etc. Computer vision and visual surveillance are two of the areas that are possibly receiving the highest dividend from the emerging uh, AI and ML. This talk of Dr. Dogra, he has already summarized very nicely the state of art of artificial, artificial intelligence and visual surveillance system that are primarily built with the help of supervised 
Ajulaj, unsupervised machine learning algorithm. The focus is mainly given to the services ranging from computer vision guided smart agriculture, um, IoT and agriculture, genome analysis using AI, crop monitoring, etc. Uh, really, I am very much impressed with Dr. Dogra's lecture, which enlightened us, uh, all of us, uh, rather, on the fascinating subject artificial intelligence and its application in agriculture and allied fields. Dr. Dogra has already mentioned many things. Uh, as uh, why we choose field of agriculture because we belong to agricultural uh, sector. So, and our country is uh, having the major uh, country for agriculture. So agriculture is our major uh, um, activity. So we have to choose it. And very nicely you have explained all these things. And uh, even you have gone depth in genomic study, drug discovery, everything you have very nicely explained. And uh, chemical genetics, phenotypics, are, uh, phenotypic screens also. Phenotypic, we are having the abiotic stresses uh, uh, when we are having to the crops. Uh, for that, uh, we have the phenomics facility, very big facility is already established in IRA, you must be knowing. Um, plant phenomics facility yeah. and uh, there are some uh, nutrient yeah, uh, fertilizer application as well as uh, the abiotic stress tolerance how we are sensing through your um, spectral analysis we are doing uh, we are also involved in those projects sometimes and uh, this insecticide pesticide spray uh, precisely and fertilizer all these things our sci scientists are uh, doing, they uh, have uh, learned some knowledge and they are also doing, but uh, your talk today's talk really it enlightened all of us and uh, very starting from fundamental to the extreme uh, molecular biotechnological you have gone through and I am really impressed when you told you have developed the system for monitoring the crowd during the Rasatra before uh, giving some <clears throat> Sensing government uh, how any if any stampede is going to happen or not. That is very, very required for the human population also and uh, human uh, humanity also. That's why uh, you are doing really a great job. And uh, we, uh, I, on behalf of our uh, institute, as well as on my behalf, I really congratulate you and thank you very much for giving a very nice talk. And I am also at the same time inviting you Sometimes we, uh, I, I, I mm -hmm. came to know that we have already developed some collaboration with you. Definitely, we are going to invite you and uh, kindly spare some time and uh, discuss with our scientists in detail. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam, and you. For, for, for all your kind words. Anyway, I am I'm very junior uh, in, in this. Uh, it's not junior. Part. Knowledge it in, doesn't have any boundary. <laughs> from a senior scientist like you. There are many scientists in your agriculture. I am from an agriculture background, my father and all my you know, forefathers, they used to do. My father was a teacher, but I'm from an agriculture family. So I know the importance of agriculture. And the reason I actually started collaborating with uh, you know, NRRI Katak is because both the institutes are co-located within the same uh, reachable locations and technology and agriculture now should marry each other so that we can come up with our indigenous products. And this is possible. And I'm happy uh, today that all these senior scientists who were much expert into this field, they listen to me. <laughs> and this platform, I will definitely you know, rejoice this lecture, maybe throughout my whole life, that I gave a lecture to all these senior scientists. Thank you, madam, for inviting me. Thank you. And I thank you all the scientists here, including uh, Dr. Somnath, Dr. Sudhamai Mondal, Dr. Roth, and obviously Dr. Maiti, who, who already told that actually the project we started during his time, Finally, it is coming to a shape that the government is going to approve something. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Okay, Somnath, yeah. Ah, thank you can you, proceed. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So I shall take a few moments for proposing the vote of thanks. So it is an honor to conclude today's special talk by extending many, many thanks to Dr. Dogra for accepting our invitation and delivering this special talk on AI. So, sir, thank you for your talk. It was very informative and enjoyable. It will give us some ideas to integrate AI in our agricultural research. Thank you very much. 
I also express uh, our sincere gratitude to our director, Madam Dr. Padmini Swain, for presiding over today's program, and Dr. Dipankar Maithi, our previous director, for their constant uh, support and guidance to make this program a success. Thank you very much, sir and madam. Uh, I thank uh, Dr. P.C. Roth and uh, Dr. Sudharman Mondal for planning and coordinating the activities. I also thank this, all the scientists and researchers from other institutes who are attending this talk virtually. I thank all HODs, scientific, administrative, finance, and other staff members of NRI for all necessary support. Last but not the least, I am thankful for, to the staffs of Arisal and the committee members of Ajitika Amrit Masa for all necessary arrangements. So thank you one and all. So with this, so we came to the end of today's program. So Director Madam, kindly call it a day. You are, um, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is really an excellent day and uh, we can call it a day. Very nicely organized. Thank you very much, Dr. Somna. We can. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Dr. Mighty.